Durham, the home of North Carolina pride. known by Durham, but we call it the Bull City. It is a kind of very unique place. It is one where I think in and, and every uh, sort of opportunity exists there, whether it's in, in business, education, activism, rich in history, rich in culture. That's sort of where I very much intersect. To describe the roots of my community is pretty easy because it's a small rural community. And up until recent years, everybody was almost a relative. Being a rural community, you were not exposed to the outside world too much. You had to go out in it. But now the outside world is moving in. So we have two groups of people have merged into the Rougemont community, and it's, a, it's sort of a family. The thing that makes you a cool Durhamite is civic engagement. That's what Durhamites do. They're civically engaged, whether it be on a, like a lower level in their city councils, or in their communities, in their schools, or on a, as a board member somewhere. They're actively engaged in the civics of their community. And that even includes voting, right? So when we just had this last local election, 9% of the population voted. We have to make sure that we're voting. Your voice is heard when you go behind the curtain and you do whatever you do, and you're entitled to do whatever you do but be there to do it. Don't meet me in the parking lot complaining. If you don't vote, don't talk. A thing that I'm concerned about living in Durham and even in the Triangle area is a lot of the, the, the new development. And as much as we ha are having a heavy influx of new uh, residents, we need to find more affordable ways to develop housing. If we can adjust some of our laws so that we can require developers that create residential housing to at least make a certain percentage of it affordable for the population of the people that live in the communities that they're coming into. I feel like we can offset some of the homelessness, the displacement of people, and we can keep some of the uh, essence and like the spirit of the city alive. That's what makes a community, not the high rises and the towers and the condos, and it's the people. When you have such a wide disparity in terms of those who have and those who have not, you know, you're in danger. Any nation, any city, any state is in danger if you don't try to find a way to sort of level that. Everybody doesn't have to live in a mansion. Everybody doesn't have to have the same car or the same education. But the same entryway for opportunity. I think that's what's right. If I am on the only one in my community that's successful, then what about the other people? How can we make our communities and the economy uh, become sort of a, a large family? What keeps me up at night? I think it can best be said the disuniting of America, you know, where there's an America over here and there's an America over there. And so how do you get back to that e pluribus unum, you know, out of many one? And so that for me is a very interesting, unique point and place, you know, for us in America. The opportunity to sort of find ways to come together to sort of solve some of the, the common issues, you know, not that everyone has a degree on it, but somewhere along the line, if you call yourself an American, there has to be some kind of belief or some idea that democracy matters. And I think that is what very much gets lost, the question of democracy. And, and, and what does democracy mean to you? And then more importantly, the question of truth. What does truth mean to you, right?